Hi guys, it's Colette. Welcome back to my channel. And um, today we're going to be doing seven spiritual um, habits that you should dump now. Seven spiritual things that may have crept up on you. Um, habits that don't serve you well when it comes to making progress spiritually. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, there's a difference with this new type of video in that um, for certain sort of maybe teaching videos there will be a blog post a written blog post on my website and I will put a link to that in the description box below um, so if you enjoy the video but you want to keep notes on it just click on the link and you'll be able to maybe even download it or whatever so I'm making a wee bit more use of my website but anyway um, I've got seven spiritual habits um seven spiritual habits that no longer serve you give them away now now habit number one is holding yourself to a schedule that does not work for you right so it's that time of year where we may have said that we wanted to set up schedules for being more spiritual practicing our magic this that and the next thing or you may have done that last year maybe before covid hit or whatever but you've set distinct schedules rather than um wanting to do something and giving yourself a maybe flexible regime so more than likely if you've set um a schedule and um you've tried to keep to it but you haven't been able to the habit that you've now got is berating yourself for not keeping to that sort of schedule so the first habit i want you to give away is not necessarily the schedule itself it's berating yourself for not keeping to that schedule so take a wee step back and think about how you want to go forward spiritually in say the year ahead think of how what fits you know it's it's very much like um at certain times of the year we're saying, well, i'm going to stick to that number of calories or i'm going to go to the gym whatever we do that for spirituality as well but spirituality is like creativity it kind of flows sometimes and then it doesn't and trying to force it when it's not really flowing can be very difficult and um spirituality should never feel like a chore if you want to do your tarot cards or you want to learn your runes or you want to meditate say every third or fourth day leaving it fluid like that can be far better than saying monday wednesday friday saturday i'm going to do this this and this because the chances are that you probably won't stick to it so give yourself a flexible path a, a flexible um one let's say um back away from schedules that are too intense maybe they were for a person that you aren't now you might have been more physically or mentally fit when you made them and they are too much for you now you might um, have realized that with all the difficulties with covid you're not that person anymore um so give yourself a wee break <laughs> and the habit is to stop berating yourself for not keeping to a spiritual schedule and I think that's a good one you know as I said spirituality shouldn't feel like a chore right number two habit number two that you should um give up accruing psychic tools whether they're tarot cards oracle cards crystals or books right so you're new to a spiritual path or you're, you're developing and you're finding out about it wonderful so you buy a book and you read it and then you buy another book and then you get a tarot deck and then you get another tarot deck and then you maybe start collecting crystals and instead of just having to say one sale a night you have two or three or four or i really like citrine so you gather that a bit that's me but basically when we start along a path or when we discover something new 
we tend to accrue the spiritual tools to allow us to make progress with that and that's fine but there comes a time where you have to stop that because there's only so much you can take in and let's just say um, I'm describing myself but I'll be describing many of you so you are beginning to develop with the tarot you love the tarot and off you go you buy a tarot deck that you've just looked at the picture of the fool you've not done much research on it but the picture of the fool you like it so obviously the rest of the deck you're going to like no um although it, you should have gone and done a full sort of look at the cards on the internet before you even put them in a basket to be honest Make sure you connect with the deck, otherwise you'll buy that deck, you'll get torn in, you'll enjoy it, then it'll ease off a bit and then you will put it to the side and oh that one's like that one so I'll go and get that one. Um, and before you know it, you've got tarot decks that you've used once or twice sitting in a drawer or in a box and they're no good to anyone well they're, they're good to other people but they're not for you so if you're in that situation please stop buying unless you think it definitely is something that you want and you know that you'll use time and time again try and be a wee bit minimalist <laughs> with what you're bringing in you know maybe if you bring something in um give something away pass things on you know, some people say that, you know, you shouldn't pass on a tarot deck, you know. There's all sorts of old wife's tales and stuff to do with that. Well, I've had a lot of tarot decks and I, I really am down to about four decks now. And the rest have been gifted away. And I don't believe anything but love went with them. So what I'm trying to say is when you get an interest in something, we tend to accrue too many books too many crystals, too many bags of runes and you sit and look at it and there's just too much and a lot of the time it can it can make you feel quite bad that you've spent money on these things and you're not using them so as I say try and be a wee bit minimal, minimalist one in one out um, you could maybe um, again do thorough research before you bring a tool, a psychic tool, a spiritual tool in. Um, and that that's books, that's um, tools, that's, you name it, everything. <laughs> sorry, great storms over there. Hiya. Um, so, sorry, put them off my track there. So, yes, be minimalist and um, don't go hell for leather getting too many things because they just become spiritual clutter and sometimes that can hold back our development so now habit three follows on from habit two and it's hoarding spiritual bits and bobs just in case now i have to say that i am so so uh, well i used to be as I, I collected everything um, just in case because I was working a lot magically um, I didn't just have one magical box I had like a magical cupboard and um, it began to be really really too much now don't get me wrong there's certain things that you need if you want to be working with magic you know that there's bits and bobs like you, you know I like shells and magic I like ribbons but about two or three years ago I asked people to save me the ribbons when they got them in like flowers or even pyjamas come with ribbons around them now and I now have a box of ribbons that it would take me about another lifetime to get through them with spells so I had to say right I've got enough ribbons there's no point in any more that's the ribbons and it was the same with uh, feathers. I use feathers and magic, but also use them for little travel spells and stuff like that. Um, but I was actually, I actually had too many. And every time I'd see one, I'd pick it up. Oh, that's a nice one. I'll put it in my box. Oh, there's another one. Too many feathers. Too many feathers. No matter how many people I was sending a get well soon card too with a wee feather in it that's a nice thing to do actually or a haste you back card you know um, missing you wee feather dead nice but 
you don't need all the feathers in the world. Yes, if you're making maybe jean catchers or things with feathers, but I wasn't. So my ribbons and my feathers now have a cap on them. And anything that does come into me, I'll make sure it finds a home. Um, or again, if it's a spectacular ribbon and I don't have that particular one, I'll make sure that it's one in, one out. So don't be a hoarder of spiritual um, bits and bobs stuff. Um, now, my husband, Jim, he started off in his 20s with a, a magical chest, big, big thing. And everything went in that because he was in the military, so he had to, and they moved about a lot, so he had to take these things with him. Um, and it it got that it was a bit like me that things weren't fitting in that one thing. Um, so even even he who has things in his chest going back forty years, and um, the chest itself is something amazing. You know, it's, it was even older than that. But um, just last month he went through and took out the things that he knew he would never need again, and you know, gifted me wee bits and bobs and I gifted and gifted the girl some wee bit and bob and you know bit by bit it was just such a relief for him to look at this and know that everything he needed for his magic was in that box and I'm getting there very similar so are you a hoarder? Have you bought things that you put by? Um I mean I could do I think I've done uh oh years ago a video on you know, what is in my magical chest, I would be prepared to do that again if, if people wanted that. So put it in the comments if you would like an understanding of certain things that I keep in my magical chest and why I would use them. Uh, and I'll, I'll happily do that for you. So, don't be a hoarder. Minimalist, up to a point. My girls are always laughing because I always say in my heart I'm a minimalist and they look at my oils cupboard or my craft cupboard and they're like, no ma'am, you're not. <laughs> anyway, right, habit number four that you have to, have to dump is comparing your progress or your ability to that of someone else, right? Spirituality and spiritual progress is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And you'll always have people who appear on a higher level than you, and you'll always have people that are starting off behind you. And that will never change. That will never change in life anyway. But I see so many people that start um, and they get off to a good start and they're getting wee bits of affirmation from their cards that they're doing it right, or maybe they're in a spiritual circle and they're getting affirmation that they're getting right. And then they see someone that's maybe been doing it four or five years that seems so much better than them. Um, and it's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm no good at this. I, I, I'm not like them. And that is a big reason for many people giving up on the spiritual practice and um, I see it time and time again. It's not a competition. If you want to compete against anyone, compete a bit against yourself, um, but you're always going to have people that are a wee bit more talented than you or less talented or put, are able to put in more work to learn stuff than you are at a certain time in your life and then maybe 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 you will find that you know um you catch up um don't judge yourself really really please don't um what a good bit yeah look at it this way if you're continually judging yourself uh against someone that you're you perceive as being better than you um, and you're taking on board I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough um, I'm giving up what I want you to know is that you've let your ego win because your ego doesn't like to feel not as good as anyone else so by you comparing yourself to other people and their levels you're allowing your ego to 
sort of talking your ear and saying, oh, no, no, we can't, we can't put up with this. No, 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 no. That will, that the ego can't deal with you not being as good as that other person. And if you think of it that way, you know, it will get you going. It really will. Don't let your ego whisper in your ear to stop your progress just because it's got hurt feelings that it's not as good as anybody else or that person that you want to be. So I think that's a good one and I think it should resonate with a few people. Right, habit number five is, to dump is giving up when you hit a plateau. So you're learning spiritually, you're moving on. And it's like anything in life when you're learning, the graph goes up the way and it goes up quite quickly, almost exponentially because of the enthusiasm and the way you feel about spirituality. You know, think of the way you feel when you get a new tarot deck and you want to go through all the cards and you want to understand them all as quick as possible and it goes up and then it starts to plateau. Everybody plateaus. Um athletes that are um, training plateau the plateau is necessary to avoid burnout the plateau is necessary for a kind of quietish time where you can discern what you do want to take on and what you don't it's it's a time of discernment it's a time of more letting things sort of just lie for a while. Think of it if you were baking bread, you know, the, the, the bread has to prove, it has to be allowed to expand at its own rate. And um, if you don't do that, you're not going to get very good bread. It will be flat and it will be yucky. So bear that in mind. If you've hit a plateau, a plateau is what it is. Anybody studying, anybody who is um, is running a, a marathon will hit a stage where they feel as though they've hit a wall. But they don't necessarily push, 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 push through it. They may slow down a bit. They'll allow themselves to get that energy. Um, so don't let a plateau become a full stop, okay? Right, habit number six. Oh, this is a good one. And we're all, we've all done this. Um, you have to quit the habit of becoming a slave to divination. Now, divination is the ability to divine or see answers through paranormal means. So that takes in all your divinatory tools like tarot, oracle cards, um, runes, crystals, smarties if that's what you choose to do, dice, um, the I Ching, all these forms of sortilege of, of, of divination come under this. Um, so being a slave to divination when you first start you'll use your cards and you'll begin to get a wee bit more confidence in them and they'll start to give you good answers and at the start you will be asking questions about um about big questions about life you know would it be advisable for me to change career or job blah 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 and as you start getting affirmations and good answers and you work them through, you realise that you, you are getting good core answers. And that's when sometimes if it's a lesser question, we go to the cards and we ask it. And that's okay, we get a sort of answer and that's fine. But too often we start using divination as a crutch. And um, I've seen this so much that people are going to their cards to ask silly questions. Um, and what happens is you get rubbish answers. The cards are all confused. They're not telling you anything clearly. And that's when you have to put them away. If you are living your life every day by divination, 
um, for little things, little questions, then not only are you becoming obsessed, you're also dishonouring your divinatory tool, whether that's tarot runes or whatever. You're also dishonouring any guides that you're expecting to help you with this, okay? So um, I've re I wrote a, a little chapter in, um, oh goodness, what one was that? One of my books. I think it might have been maybe The Universe. No, no, it wasn't. It was How to Read an Egg on divination and how it can get out of control uh, and how someone can use divination from the, the moment that they hear a gurgle in their tummy in the morning because you can actually divine using tummy noises and, and brushing your teeth or whatever. So that's, if I can find that, I'll put a link to it, what book it's in, because it's it was meant in a humorous way, but making a point. So I'll link that as well as the, the blog post for this. So anyway, go cold turkey from divination for a while if you have to. Put your cards, etc. away and think for yourself. Divination is meant to be a tool to help us, to allow us to move forward. It's not meant to be the deciding factor on everything. So please treat it with respect. Um, merge your spiritual with your practical because one without the other can let you down, to be honest. You need to be able to take on the esoteric and merge it with the practicalities of your own life. And if you can't do that, then put, put the spiritual tools away for a while, okay? Don't dishonour them. It's the worst thing you can do because they'll give you rubbish and you'll make mistakes. Right, habit number seven, the last one. Um, and I've got something for you to think of on, on this one. Habit number seven is giving yourself a spiritual label. This is important. Most people are drawn to one thing, whether it's mediumship, clairvoyance, um, or the sort of more shamanic side, or they want to pick up on magic. And they buy the books and maybe take the courses or they develop um, and they, they immerse themselves in that one thing. And, and when they've done that and they feel confident enough, they call themselves a medium, um, a shaman, a clairvoyant, a healer. And that's because they've labelled themselves, that's what they will be known as. Now, that's if, if you're... Um, if this is your occupation and people are coming to you for one thing, yes, business cards or whatever have to have clairvoyant or medium or whatever on it, but um, those labels stop you looking into your other skills. Now, what I want to say is that most spiritual people maybe have one skill that they or you know one clear clairvoyance clairsentience um you know clear cognizance whatever they have one that they excel at or that they're more connected to but they also could easily dip into the other skills if they stop labeling themselves and stopped ignoring other things like a lot of clairvoyants that are very, very good at clairvoyance um, have an underdeveloped clear audience skill. And if they kept the clairvoyance where it was and went to develop the clear audience, they would bring these skills together um, and they would be even better than they are. But they've labelled themselves a clairvoyant, so they don't look there, you know. My um, little bit on this, so I'm asking you not to particularly label yourself unless it's your occupation. And even then, you know, when I um, was working as a pharmacist, I began to be known more as a medium and a healer. 
and that was fine but I, I enjoyed mediumship and I enjoyed the healing but oh the thing that fascinated me was my clairvoyance because my clairvoyance gave me information um, for other people you know could see things about them could tell things about them could see their auras you know clairvoyance to me was what I felt more connected to but other people were seeing me more as a medium um, so when I decided to start um, to give up pharmacy and come and do my clairvoyance full time I knew I had to use that as a label because I didn't want people just coming for mediumship so I had a clairvoyant reading and if a spirit comes through great but by dropping the medium label people didn't come in and say where's my auntie Anne or or you didn't get this so you didn't get that um so I never wanted to say I'm doing a full mediumship reading because to me I was a better clairvoyant than a medium although people seem to see me more as a medium so anyway bit by bit um, I started incorporating healing into the practice as well and then um, I met my elder and started following a shamanic role so I, I remember sitting one day and saying to my guide what am I because I did healing um, I did spiritual healing and shamanic drum healing. I worked as a clairvoyant with mediumship thrown in if, if the spirits come through. Um, I also was writing columns for a syndicated newspaper at the time. And um, what else was there? I was running workshops and I was writing. And um, I remember going to White Storm and saying, well, what am I? You know... I'm going by the name of clairvoyant at the moment, but what am I? And he looked at me and he said, oh, you're a magpie. And then he went. <laughs> and it's so good. And I want you to think about magpie. So any of you that feel that you've got different skills, you do a bit of healing, you do a bit of clairvoyance um, and yes, you may have one skill, one psychic skill that you are better at but don't label yourself as that unless it's part of the package that you're giving to someone, do you know what I mean? Uh, but you as a person, if you've got a wee bit of clairvoyance, if you sense things, if you can heal if, if you like to do spells, if you like to do magic, just say, I'm a magpie. And think on that. Um, think on what being a magpie would mean. Because I actually find it quite funny. But that's what White Storm said. So to all you magpies out there, don't label yourself by any one thing in a way that stops you developing other skills and I think that's it yep so I'm a magpie <laughs> I know many magpies um I hope you've liked this remember that there'll be a link to the written document obviously it's not the same this is more of a blog and this is a vlog um so you can actually print it out if you want and um enjoy and um, if you, I've got a new light lighting system um, and it will take me a few videos to get used to it. Um, so if there are any lighting flaws in this video, if you think it's too bright, if you think it's okay, if you think it's wobbly, if you think I could do something with it, it's a new light system. It's got three different tones, but for each of them it's got 30, it's got 10 different settings. So um, I'll be doing different videos with different lights and um, I hope you'll help me. And uh, this uh, is the sort of palest one because the lights that were a wee bit brighter made me um, odd. But we'll see. Help me with the lighting, but be kind. Please be kind. Um, this uh, light is a... Uh, 
is just a godsend because it's lightweight, I can use it and it makes me a wee bit more mobile for sitting in different chairs or even if I'm not well I can be in bed. So anyway, um, I hope you like this video. If you do, um, please, what are you meant to do? Uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification because I actually do put a lot up on my um, community tab uh, and you only get that if you actually have hit the bell notification so please do that and if you want to support the channel the link to coffees and paypal is in the description below so I hope you've enjoyed that let's have a conversation about it um, do you recognise any of these bad habits for yourself? And if you do, please let me know. Now, I'm going to attempt to switch this off now.